the forehead of your robot. I've been told this is the place to post mysterious stuff and get answers. Which is good, because answers are what I need right now. So I live in one of those older suburban developments outside Toronto. You know, the ones they built up in the 1970s for the poorer people to move into. I've lived at that house for my whole life, and that includes my childhood. Growing up in the early 2000s with rather frugal parents, my childhood memories were of watching movies on VHS, playing hidden object games on Windows XP, and so on. Of the many movies I remember watching as a young boy, one of them was certainly not Frankie Pig Visits Niagara Falls. I discovered the obscure film, when I was cleaning out the basement. My parents had moved out some time ago, and had left me the old house, and they wanted me to make one last check for anything they might want to bring to their new house. When I was searching under the house, I found a box in the corner of the room labeled, Kids Movies. I opened it, and began to look at some of the VHS tapes. Most of them, I had fond memories of. Veggie Tales, Peter Pan, The Baron Stein Bears. Some I just found weird as a child, like those obscure Christian films like Bible Man. Out of all these tapes, only one really stuck out to me as unfamiliar, the aforementioned Frankie Pig Visits Niagara Falls. According to the back of the case, it was made in 1992 by a Canadian film studio called, Funbox Entertainment. Odd. Most of the cassettes I had were from the late 90s, around the time my older brother was born. Intrigued, I read the synopsis. From the studio that's brought you Frankie Pig's big adventure, Canada's favorite farm friend is back in a feature-length adventure. When farmer Casey lets the farm animals go on a vacation, troublemaking Frankie Pig decides to jump ship in Niagara Falls, making friends and learning lessons as he tries to find farmer Casey and the others. Alright, sounds innocent enough, I thought to myself. Fortunately I keep my VCR plugged into the TV, in case I ever want to feel nostalgic, so I decided to find out what I was missing, and loaded the cassette into the machine. So first it starts with the production company logo shining on the screen to that generic sort of synth music. Then another logo, for a different company that did the distribution called, Kidscape Distribution Canada. After the logos, the film began with, surprisingly enough, a live action sequence. Here on the live action, but obviously cheaply made farm, we are introduced to Farmer Casey, a friendly country girl who runs Fiddlesticks Farm. She loudly announces to the camera that she's taking the animals on a vacation, and you, the viewer, needs to help her wake them up. One by one, very slowly, we are introduced to the animated animals, Cassidy the cow, Elizabeth the horse, Larry the chicken, and Quincy the duck. But where's Frankie? Given what we know from the synopsis, that pig's up to no good. So Farmer Casey once again gives us, the viewer, the all-important duty of finding Frankie. And of course, we do. He's hiding in the mud, silly pig. Now, it's time for Farmer Casey to load the trailer and disembark on our vacation. We make a couple stops at some Canadian landmarks, where we then learn some basic information at each stop. Then, Frankie turns to the camera, and tells us he's ditching the crew when we arrive to Niagara Falls, because... That farmer lady is just so boring. So we to join Frankie, when he hops off the trailer, when nobody's looking. And that's when everything goes to hell. Immediately, the friendly looking Frankie, switches from a cute little pig with a hat, to a real man with a distorted pig mask, and the camera quality was significantly distorted by... I paused the tape. What the crap just happened, I asked myself. I stopped watching for a little bit to do some research. I needed to find out what the hell this film was about. So I googled it. Frankie Pig visits Niagara Falls. Nothing pops up. Nothing relevant anyways. Most of it was just some pictures of pigs on Instagram or something, who happened to be named Frankie. So I decided to look up the production company listed, Funbox Entertainment. Immediately, I'm presented with their website. So I click on it. The website is so obviously dated, with crappy vector graphics and pixelated GIFs of various animated characters, and the company motto, creating Canada's premier animations since 1972. There's an option to see all the movies they've produced. And guess what? No mention of Frankie Pig visits Niagara Falls. 
or Frankie Pig at all, for that matter. The most recent film they're credited with is an animated kids film, their specialty, entitled Horace's Lonely Island, made in 1991. However, there was a number to call at the bottom, so I did. No response. So I decided that before I did any more research, I would finish the film. I sat back on the couch and pressed play. This new, creepy version retained the original childish voice of Frankie, except now it seemed like he was crying as he spoke, like he was forced to say the words. Now I've left those fools. It's time to explore, said Frankie. He was standing in a field, very obviously not a set. The camera turned to showcase the skyline of Niagara Falls, lit with night lights. The film quality became more like those creepy, found footage films on YouTube somewhere. The camera was behind Frankie, following him as we slowly walked towards the city. The film cuts to Clifton Hill. It's practically midnight judging from the sky, and the lights of the strip are the only light. Frankie walks up the street, past several tour buses and tourists, none of whom seem to notice him. It's when he turns onto a side street, when I notice he's holding a knife. A woman, dressed similarly to Farmer Casey, is standing at the end of the alley. When she turns around, her face is disfigured. Frankie, you naughty pig! I never thought I'd find you! She screamed eerily. Then, four men wearing animal masks appear behind her, and Frankie walks up to her. I knew I'd find you, Farmer Lady! The child on the other side of the microphone was bawling into tears. Suddenly, the screen went static, and the camera cuts to the film set at the farm. There, the five men are brutally stabbing the actress who was playing Farmer Casey, while a young boy, who I think is the voice actor who played Frankie, watched. I couldn't believe what I was watching. Why would my parents even have this VHS? I decided to stop watching again. What is the story of this strange film? There had to be some sort of explanation. So I did some more digging on the company, Funbox Entertainment. Turns out they declared bankruptcy in 1994, because they hadn't made money since 1992, the same year Frankie Pig Visits Niagara Falls supposedly came out. Other than that, nothing was that out of the ordinary, just business stuff. Obviously, I was missing something. The opening credits mentioned another company, Kidscape Distribution Canada, the people who distributed the film to retailers. A search for them turned up their website, which showed they were still distributing films. A phone number was provided here, so I called. The following is a rough transcription of what took place. Hey, this is Chris from Kidscape Distribution of Greater Toronto. How may I help you today? Hey Chris, I'm removed for privacy reasons. I'd like to ask you some questions about one of the films you distributed. Yeah, sure. Which one? This old VHS kids cartoon. I think it's called, Frankie Pig Visits Niagara Falls. Oh crap. I haven't heard of that. If you could leave your name and information, and I'll get back to you when I can, sorry. That's alright. My name is, removed for privacy reasons, my phone number is 178-2131, and my address is 3910 Street, Itabicoke. Hope I can get some answers. The information I left him was fake, by the way. The way he acted over the phone was way too suspicious. Soon after, I went back to the tape and watched further. After the stabbing scene on set was finished, the scene jumped back to Niagara Falls, where the animals are now carrying the other woman who was dressed as Farmer Casey. They walk her back onto Clifton Hill when police lights begin to flare. Again, the camera cuts to a scene of the falls at daytime, and all seems normal, until a hand appears in front of the camera, gives a thumbs up, and some men in the background repeat, Let's move, move, move! Then, the body of the other woman is seen, being thrown into the falls. The camera is spun around to reveal more establishing shots of the city, before a man starts singing children's nursery rhymes. It then resumes to the animated children's film I thought I would be watching. Frankie begins to regret leaving the other animals, and begins to take action to find Farmer Casey and the gang, while also learning about the history and significance of the city of Niagara Falls. Then the credits began to roll, and this is when I got my notebook out. 
First and foremost, I needed to find out if the actor who portrayed Farmer Casey was ever murdered, the actor who portrayed Frankie was ever kidnapped, and if the director or someone at the studio ever got caught. But to my surprise, all the names were blurred out of the credits. This is when I went to the police. I drove over to the station and handed in the VHS, and told them everything I knew. They told me that they would do everything they could to find out the meaning of this tape. So that's it, you're thinking. That's all. No. That's not all. Before I posted this, something came up on the news. Remember the fake address I gave the production company? Yesterday, there was a fire at that location. A fire the police suspect to be arson. I think I'm onto something here. If any of you have ever seen this movie, or know something about it, or have even worked on it, please tell me about it. I need to know everything about this film. Is it just my copy that's like this? Do the events on film correlate to anything in Niagara Falls? Help me out.